Check out my foundry turtle. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. That was not what this video was going to be about. Uh, my next video was going to be a very intricate casting with an intricate core that goes inside it. The pattern was made by Keith Rucker, and uh, the core is made. I had to do a little adjustment on the box, but I got that part done, and I went to mull the sand to do the main frame of it. And, uh... Muller broke again. Also, as per the thumbnail, uh, stick around at the end of this video. Uh, I have a father and daughter out of Texas that came by to visit, and uh, we made some turtles. I let her take over there and make the mold, and we did a pour, and you'll get to see that at the end of this. This external plow that keeps the sand sweeped away from the outside, it got bent, cocked sideways, and then hung the thing up, tripped the breaker. This thing is just flimsy steel, right? I mean, it ought to be good, rigid cast iron. I was wondering, should I just go ahead and cast a, a, a good arm to go out there? I mean, even cast aluminum's better than what I got here right now. If I'm going to go to that extent, that's going to shut me down for about a week. Maybe I should look, uh, take a look at the other muller that I just bought. Yes, I just bought another muller, along with, get this, an inducto therm induction furnace. Because I want to keep a few of them in case I need them, because those things are really handy when you're doing something. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, and I got one more. We need to jump in the golf cart again right quick. Okay. I forgot to show you one more pile of stuff that goes with this thing. Per Brian Block's request. <laughs> Brian's been on me about getting an induction furnace forever. Well, I got one now, but I don't have the power to pump in it. Uh, we're going to have to do a little work on that. Check this baby out. We have an industrial heavy duty muller, solid steel wheels, cast. I probably ductile cast iron. I can't count the differences in how much beefier this thing is than what I've been using all this time. Unlike my other muller, which has two hollow uh, sheet metal wheels welded together with a leaf spring to hold tension down on them, these things are solid with no spring. There's no need for it because I can't pick them up. Yeah, I'm gonna, I've decided to just go ahead, instead of worrying with the other one, focus on this one. The only problem, this has a three-phase motor. The other one that I've been running is a single phase. So I got to comparing the notes. They were both one-horse motors. They were both on a C-frame, J-frame, whatever you call it. Uh... They both had a 5 8 shaft, spline shaft. So guess what? Yep. I robbed the motor. It was right there. Okay, I flipped this thing upside down uh, to make it easier for me to get to the motor. I have placed two flat tools in here to try to pull this thing on out, and it will not come. So I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to use that right here on this flange and I'm going to just ease that motor right off the shaft. Oh, I finally got this thing out. Now all I got to do is verify that's the right shaft. I got a key that goes in there. I need to measure the length of the shaft from this interface to that. Looks like I'm going to have to cut this out. I'm going to have to cut it here and here because 
this angle is welded in right there but i'm gonna have to have that additional clearance sooner time always wear your safety glasses All right, so I got the motor on, got everything ready. I got to adjust the plows a little bit there grabbing, and I got to change the direction of this thing. It's going the wrong way. Well, I, uh, I got that fixed. Hit the button to test it to verify that I did wire it right, and as I did, this plow, which was rubbing last night, actually dug in hung the machine up and it broke this Lovejoy coupling. So now I have to get a new one of these. And I was, I was talking to Brian a while ago on the phone about all this and he suggested that on the next coupling I get a shear pin type. This is actually a key. And uh, if I had had a, sh a shear bolt in there, it would have just sheared that. I could have stuck another bolt in there and been done with it. The induction furnace. That's it, all wrapped up, taped up, and over here is the furnace. Wrapped it up, tried to get it as weatherproof as possible. It is out of the weather, it is out of the rain anyway, up under this awning, but uh, I didn't want it subject to all the humidity, so I went ahead and wrapped it up good. And I've got one other machine coming. I'm waiting on my window of opportunity to get it shipped now. But it's in Sweetwater, Tennessee, and it's a big tumbler. Uh, anything that saves me time is well worth money spent. So, oh, and i got to show you one more thing. I'm going to just freehand it. But uh, I've got it suspended right now I just got it sitting flat down on the floor but this is a sand saver and it's over a hundred years old this is steam bent hardwood I'm assuming looking at the grain it's probably mahogany and uh, it's got a cast iron bar here and it's got a wheel down here with a lead weight on one side of it and you flip that switch on, cuts the motor on, drives this shaft, gets the wheel spinning, and it shakes the stew out of that uh, basket. What would normally take about an hour to save, this does in about 10 seconds. Amazing. I am uh, I'm thrilled with this. So everything I've purchased so far, I haven't regretted. As soon as I get a new uh, Lovejoy coupling for this, we're going to bring it in the building. I'm going to build a base to extend the height of it to where this trap is right over the edge of my molding bench. Any little improvements here and there I can make are well worth it. The only thing that concerns me about this thing is there is no identification at all on it. I have no clue who made it, but... It was done right, and if any of you old foundrymen recognize this thing, and if you can tell me the name of it or the company that's built these, drop it in the comments below, please, because I need to be able to get replacement plows in the future uh, when these wear down. That's the only thing that scares me is not having any information on this. I want to thank Keith Rucker. Uh, if it hadn't been for Keith, I wouldn't have known about these items that were for sale. I wanted to let him know how much I appreciate that. The guy that sold this equipment to me uh, is a very fascinating man. He was very kind to deliver the stuff up here. I'm not going to tell you who he was because he prefers to keep a low profile 
And so we're going to honor that. I will say you don't often meet someone that generates their own electricity with their own hydroelectric power plant. Keith is as excited as I am about the inductotherm furnace. Uh, he's going to come up and help me get this wired up when we get to that point. As I've mentioned before, I'm not an electrician, and uh, so I really appreciate his help in this. I had two visitors drop by today, Eric Jones along with his daughter Elizabeth. Uh, they are from Texas, and I had put out a short video last week on Instagram of me finding a turtle in the sand while we were on our little family vacation. And uh, I said, should I cast it? And I had a whole bunch of people say yes. Yeah. So I'm going to turn this over to Elizabeth and let her make this mold, and we're going to pour it tonight. So we are going to make several turtles tonight, and Elizabeth's got the turtle in place, and she's going to put the facing sand down. Now, since we're using Petrobon, I'm not worried about saving it. It's pretty much consistent all the way through. Because the flasks are so narrow, Liz is going to hold it as she strikes it off. Elizabeth is going to take the flask along with the follow board and rotate it up on its edge. And then she'll just remove the follow board, do away with it. And then lay the other half down. Because these are so narrow, and because we are using Petrobon, uh, it will slide out of the flask, so we have to watch that. Here she's cutting the alignment keys. These flasks do not have registration pins, so she's going to cut the alignment keys in order to be able to locate the coat to the drag. Here Liz is placing two cheek molds we're going to serve that are going to serve as the cope and this will be filled all the way up to that top that gives us more of a height to put our sprue hole in and it gives the head of the riser some additional insulation as she's dusting it she's going to uh, pay particular attention to the keys giving them a little more dust just to help aid in clean release when they're separated. Next, she's going to take her fingers and she's going to put a very light coat of sand down first. If you go to dump it straight out of the scoop on there, uh, it can hammer the parting dust out of the way and you won't have a, a good separation barrier. Uh, here Elizabeth is going to cut the sprue. Uh -huh. She's trying to position it as close as she can to the turtle. Here Elizabeth is going to pick the entire mold up all three flasks and she's going to flip it over upside down keeping it tight together which is a trick you got it no <laughs> and now she's going to remove the drag and there's the pattern
Here Elizabeth is dusting the turtle uh, prior to cutting the gates. Just in case any fresh sand falls down in there, it won't stick to it. And she's cutting the runner, which is going to connect to the two feet on one side of the turtle. And now she's cutting the gates from the inside out. Here Elizabeth is going to blow the any possible loose sand out of the way prior to putting it over on the conveyor. Now we're moving our riser. All right, Elizabeth is holding her turtle here. Check it out. <laughs> Tell us about your turtle, Elizabeth. What you gonna name it? Um, Freddy. Freddy the turtle. <laughs> All right. Did you have fun making it? Yeah, it was awesome. Super fun. Is this the first time you ever molded anything? Yeah, yeah, I'd never even seen it on TV before. So. Well, I'm glad you were able to, to come out, join us, and I'm glad uh, to meet you, Eric, yep. and I hope y'all uh, have a safe trip on to your next destination. Thanks so much. Well, <laughs> anyway, uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already to see all other upcoming videos here at Windy Hill Foundry. Until then, I hope everyone remains safe, healthy, and have a good day.